Hey guys, it's Chris Spate with Cheat the Game coming back at you. Today we're going to be taking a look at Resident Evil 3, the remake that's just recently come out. And I want to throw a big shout out to my pal Lobit. Uh, this is basically his lesson. And uh, it's one that he posted on the CTG Facebook page. And uh, I asked him if I could do a vid on it and I'm going to do that. But we got a problem with the Resident Evil 3 is that any code that we come out with it does have integrity checks now this particular integrity check if you remember back when we did assassin's creed unity when we turned on our codes it slams the game down just completely shuts it off however this game doesn't do that it doesn't slam down the game what it does is it prevents you from interacting with objects you can't progress in the game anymore you're just stuck where you are and uh, you got to take the game all the way back down and reload it back up to have everything turn back on again and we still have to do that if we get caught with that check. However, um, I believe Celos at Fearless made a cheat table where he, he grabbed all six integrity checks and and patched them up to where you don't have to worry about that anymore. But Lobit stated, well, why don't we just try to find the object handler routine itself and just have that return all the checks that's calling it because all the checks are calling this one function. And so he said, uh, he showed us how to patch or how to have it return the object handler function itself. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to try to find that object handler function and just have it return any integrity check that calls it. And that way we can still interact with objects, we can still get through doors, and we can progress in the game. Uh, right quick, I want to bring up uh, low bits patreon page this is his patreon page uh he's gonna have some great perks for those that want to jump on board he's an awesome game hacker has new content comes out he really helps ctg out a lot also over at his youtube channel uh, i will have both links down there in the description uh he is one of the my go-to people i go to all the time when i have questions so i mean he knows his stuff so uh, go subscribe to his channel go over to patreon check out his benefits and become a member and uh, you can really learn a lot like i have all right let me go ahead and bring everything up and we'll go ahead and get started okay bringing the game up now what i want to do is i want to go ahead and attach to the game and I'm going to go ahead and turn on my code. Okay. Load the game. And the integrity check is not checking like constantly or anything like that. It usually only does it when a new map is loading up or you know when you go out of the game and come back in. And then it'll just lock you into place. You won't be able to... Uh, interact with things anymore but as you can see right now we can interact with objects I have the infinite ammo on and we can still interact with objects via our mouse you, you can you know because you see the little mouse icon come up that way you do know you can interact with it then but usually if you go far away where it's having to draw a new map or draw new areas of a map then go back that integrity check will not let you interact with objects anymore eventually that check is going to get you and we can still interact here turn it off back on I'm trying to get it to, to do it. Show you what I'm talking about. And take a look. Now we can no longer interact with anything. We can still destroy objects, but we can't pick up anything. And you know, to start the next mission, we need to go out that door. It will not allow us out the door now. That's because the integrity check got us. We can't open our trunk. We can't save our game. Nothing. So that's what the integrity check does. So how do we go about finding this 
integrity check. Well, we're going to do it the exact same way we did with our, uh, I think it was X Live. Anyway, I'll put the video in the upper right hand corner how we did with X Live. But we're going to try to find that integrity check the same exact way. So, what I want to do is we go to the ammo address. It may already still be on there. And this is what I did is I found infinite ammo. It's a four byte. Uh, I found it and then we went to that part of memory. And I noticed that the cap is being stored in EDX. So, I'm always having EDX right to it. As you see, the normal code is having EAX right to it, which is our new amount. But EDX is always holding our cap value, so I just have our cap value constantly right into ammo. Let's go over to it, man. This is it right here. Turn off our code. And this is it. Yeah, this is our ammo code right here. And you can do uh, another code off any code near ammo. That's what low bit did, but I'm just going to use ammo itself. And what I want to do is we're going to find out. I'm sorry go to addresses and we want to copy down just the normal address that it's being stored at now this is the address this opcode right here is being stored and then we just want to come over here and paste it on our cheat table just paste it and bring it down this is the address of the opcode right here now we want to find out what accesses this address put the debugger on it and here it is and now we want to bring out that integrity check we want to find out what's causing that integrity check so we go back out let's uh, reload the game and here it is right here this is the integrity check showing disassembler here it is right here all right this is what's sending the new information on down and it does everything it needs to do And eventually it's going to come down here so let's go all the way down here and you can see I think it's right about let's see set if equal right here right here here it is it's testing and then it's going to call the object handler which is right here and if you go take a look at Celos uh, his integrity checks that he patched you'll see it's always calling this address right here towards the end this is the object handler so we're going to follow that and this is what's keeping us from interacting with objects right here so basically all we want to do is just have it always return so we'll just we'll just do a, a direct byte manipulation and we'll just call that a uh, object handler that's what I'm calling it call it whatever you want to it's just letting me know what that particular function is doing right here and basically we don't need none of this we're just going to do a direct byte let's go ahead and copy our registered symbol or cut it I mean paste it up here now the return if you want to take a look to make it return we're just going to put an ret so we're going to copy this down and we're going to take a look at the bytes so click ok and we're going to click yes to knock out the excess bytes just to see what we need we need a c3 909090 three nine zeros okay so let's do that oh, my bad let's bring back the cheat engine okay now let's just restore it we're going to go ahead and click paste click OK click no and it brings it back to the way it was now let's redo that over here so we know we need C3 so define byte and I'm just gonna go C3 909090 and we don't need all these access bytes right here we just need those four to restore it we, we don't need to deallocate new mem because we don't have a new mem to dealloc let's assign that to the current cheat table and let's uh, object handler 
my pass. So this, uh, if you come out with a cheat table, this is going to need to be on before any of your other codes can be on. And if the integrity check is already run, if that object handler is already run, you're going to have to take the game all the way down. Have to, you're going to have to bring it all the way back up again. So this time, when the game loads back up, which may take a minute or two. I had that misspelled. First thing we're going to do is go ahead and turn on our object handler bypass. And we can go ahead and turn on our MU. And we're going to try to make do all that again to see. And this time we should be able to do all that running all the way down there and all the way back up again and we still should be able to interact with objects. Therefore, you know, bypassing the anti-hack. I just want to turn it off back on. As long as we keep that object handler bypass on, that integrity check will be null and void. And you, we can still interact with objects. Okay. We can interact with that. And we could last time. Well, all the way in here. And we went all the way back up. And then we could not interact with anything. So with this object handler bypass on now, we should be able to still interact with everything and continue on with the game. And we can take a look. We can still pick up everything now. Remember, we couldn't last time. Uh, let's make sure we can get out the door. And take a look. Now we're good to go. Alright, so I do hope that that does help you when you go to these integrity checks. Let's go back. It really helps to go look and see exactly what everything is doing. And you'll notice it's calling a specific function somewhere, whether it be a function that slams the game down or turns off object handling or, or whatever that anti-hack is doing. Uh, they're getting a little more sophisticated now and doing weirder things, you know to not let you either beat the game or just not let you play it all together but regardless there's always one function that it's going to go to these integrity checks are going to go to that you can go directly to that one function that they're all calling and have it return it, just as long as something's not checking it you may want to uh find out if something's accessing it but uh Usually, uh, all the integrity checks are calling this function, and this function is turning it off. This is what's slamming us down and not able to, we're not able to interact with anything. But if you notice, all integrity checks does something like that, and you can turn it off basically by doing this right here. Just sending them back before it runs this function. So, uh, I do hope that helps you. It's just another way we can uh, avoid anti-hacks. You can possibly also use uh, Stealth Edit or the EIP Bypass. Uh, which I'll also have links up in the upper right hand corner for you. I want to go ahead and thank my partners right quick. These guys keep cheap the game running and if it wasn't for these guys I'd have to shut it down a long time ago and that's all there would be to it. But uh, I don't mind making these videos. I, I absolutely enjoy it. But these guys you know, really help CTG out uh, with donations every month and uh, 
I try my best to get them perks out as often as I can. Uh, if you'd like to come be a part of us, come over to the Patreon. You can sign up. It only costs a dollar a month. Also, uh, you can join us over at our Facebook page, which we do require you to answer three questions to get in. Or you can also come over and join us on our Discord uh, app. Uh, and all the links for that are in the description. We'd love to have you over. It's the best place to come ask your questions. we got a bunch of great game makers that hang out there. Also, again, I want to uh, especially thank Lowbit uh, for this information in regards to uh, bypassing this particular anti-hack. And we're going to see about finding some more anti-hacks to bypass in the future and use this same technique uh, that Lowbit showed me here. So that's a real good one. But I'm going to go ahead and cut on out of here. You guys take care. Keep on hacking. Most importantly, please enjoy yourself. That's really what it's all about. You cheat the game, fellas, because believe me, it doesn't mind cheating you. You all take care now.